Hey y'all, it's Alex and welcome back to my channel. Today I've got my Inktober post review. Well, post Inktober review, that's probably the better way to say that. So this is my big binder of Inktober. I have done, well, technically there should be an Inktober 2016 at the very front of this, but I only did five days. For 2017, I got up to 24, then 2018, I did all 31, but I only did posts, and I can't believe that we actually managed to get through all 31 days of Inktober and post the videos for them. Now, let me real quick get everything out of the binder. So we have the entire stack of papers out. There are actually, there's 34 pages in this stack, and that's because for the first two days, I actually have bloopers that have an intruder. Um, two things to preface, the page that will kind of be like the header, we're saving that for the very last because on this piece, I'm on this page, I'm going to kind of go over like my final thoughts. And then it goes without saying that I'm not going to link in the top corner every single video for this entire Inktober, that is far too many. So the playlist for all of them will now be in the top right corner and that's going to be it. So why don't we dive into this piece? So day one, the prompt word was ring and we had a watercolor fine, uh, metallic fine tech gold. I initially started off this piece and kind of wanted it to be like, a treasure that she had just found and she was like ecstat ecstatic about. And I started doing this kind of like western cowgirl sort of witch. And I just don't think that this really ended up, it, it didn't grab for me. I wouldn't have been able to have incorporated a background. I wouldn't have been able to use the gold as well. So I decided to start over. I had spent about 45 minutes on this original sketch. And then I moved on to this one. And I'm ecstatic about how we started off this year's Inktober. I think this was a brilliant beginning just because the background is both detailed enough and not detailed enough to still be simple while it also looks really good, which kind of makes me a little sad. I, I've been planning on doing prints and such for all of my Inktober set. And I just can't get my head around how I would do it for the metallic pieces. There are, I want to say four metallic pieces in the entire thing. And then I added some iridescent medium to a few of them. So those are presenting like the biggest challenge to me right now. So on to day two, mindless. I will admit this is also another one that has a blooper. I filmed the entire process of this piece and afterwards I just decided, oh, it's also upside down. Um, <laughs> I decided I didn't really like it. There is a cool aspect about like the brain falling out and I did see that in a few other places, but I think this is a little bit more towards cartoony than realistic. And I just, I really wanted to pr stretch myself on backgrounds. And also yellow is not the color you want for when you're drawing someone in their underpants, but I started over and I'm kind of so-so on this piece. The thing I like most about this piece is everything down here. Like I love all of these tiny details, especially this person being startled by the librarian bringing over this massive tome. I like this part of the drawing much better than I like the rest of the drawing. Oh, that caused some really bad exposure problems. That was fun. So day three, the word was bait. Um, so for the word bait, I really struggled with my thumbnails and I should actually pull out my thumbnail sketchbook wherever it went. I, I ate it. I really should for the rest of these have the thumbnails up next to the piece. So going back momentarily to mindless, I had considered doing this other piece pretty heavily, but I didn't want to have to worry too much about angles of shadows and such. 
and also I couldn't really come up with a, like this was the basic idea of the character for that one and I just didn't like it so that kind of pushed me further over towards this one then moving on to the next day so my first idea was the worm witch and then I kind of started I strayed a little bit away from that and maybe it was someone being brought along to an evil sorcerer of some kind this one was a really good contender, but like I said in the video for this one, um, I came up with this image layout while I was doing the dishes, and it just kind of worked out very well. I'm a little sad that there's this big line in the boot here, but it's an old boot. It has some, some issues with its, uh, with its color. Um, I think I should have included some grass in the front here. Maybe this is like a little dry patch. It was intended to be like a pathway, but for that to have worked, I think I should have included a path continuing over the, the hills to really kind of show that it's not just like this random little patch of dirt. I really do think the worm witches are cute. I might draw them again soon. Don't know. I'm gonna just turn the whole pile for this one. Oh, that's another thing that's kind of bugging me about if I do an Inktober booklet, which is another thing that I've been planning on. I don't know how exactly to go about the switch from landscape to portrait because it's kind of like an almost every other day kind of thing at least for a little bit here but anyway that's a thing for me to figure out later so the prompt word for day four was freeze i'm still really mad that the Bombay India inks have this shine. I don't know. There, there you can see it. It's just wherever you go over with the ink a good few times, like in full value. But I think once I scan the image, that should make it better. So hopefully that will resolve itself. Bait was really the day that it started leaning closer to just using the color however I wanted instead of as an accent. It was originally intended to just be an accent of the color, not a whole bunch of various hues originally derived from the color. It's not a bad thing, but I think it makes these pieces look a little bit less cohesive. Day five build is probably in the running for my favorite piece of all Inktober. And, and that's like including past year. This might be one of my favorite pieces among all of my art even. And these witches have actually inspired a future project that you guys will be seeing probably around the Christmas time area. Don't know yet. Still, still planning that one. But um, I think I should have left her face alone at just like some dashed eyes. I, the eyelashes I gave her don't exactly work out. And I wish I would have hid a little bit more detail in here, like having the books and the potions here is a nice touch, but I think if I'm gonna do a piece like this, I'm gonna have to hide more next time. On day six, the prompt word was husky. I worked a little bit too hastily on this and all of my painting is very messy. I think that's partly because I felt a little aimless with this color. The only part where I knew for sure what I was doing was with the snake down here, but for everything else, it was just kind of like slapdash. Like putting the extra shadow over the top of the husky kind of ended up messing up the area of the collar. And I think the eye should also be more in shadow if all of this side of their body and their teeth are shadowed as well. But I didn't want to dull the eye because that's kind of like where I want some of the focus to be. This one, I, I like the design of it, but I'm not happy with the execution. Even the snake, I think, is really messy. So I'm definitely going to have to edit, edit this one in Photoshop before I take it and make it a print. Day seven, Enchanted. I think this is actually one of my least favorite of this entire Inktober series. Originally, I had planned for the book over here to be like this big, at least the size of her head, just to show that it's like a lot of work that she has ahead of her. And I had 
just randomly pick scarf from my random selections box. So I don't think I'm as attached to the idea of the scarf. Like I probably wouldn't have been if I'd randomly selected any other word, but piercing. Piercing was an option in there and I'm a little sad that that wasn't it. And I was a little sad about that in the moment, which is why she has all of the piercings around her, which I figured since piercings are enchanted golems that that would make sense. But I think that was just me justifying using something that I wanted, even though I'd already picked, had someone pick a random object for me to include in this piece. Um, that's kind of like the downfall of me picking the random options. I just, I, I want to stick to them so much so that it just kind of hurts the piece sometimes. Also, her head is too big and her hands aren't detailed enough. Like, she's missing fingernails. That really bugs me now, now that I've noticed it. Day 8 Frail is another one that I'm not too happy with. I think it's just a thing that I'm not happy with the brown tones, just because I don't really like making a brown tone the star of a piece, you know? Like, it, it's, it doesn't have a lot of pop to it. Other than the fact that I don't really like the brown, I could have done a lot more to make her seem frail. I know that they're like the frail teacup and the old lady and his hand is also falling off. Like, there's a lot of things that make this frail, but I still think that I could have done more to make it better. All that aside, I really do like her hair. Like, that, that is some good hair. Day 9 Swing. This is another one that is A, in the metallic, so I don't know how I'm going to do the prints of this one, especially since I did shading inside of the metallic. And I also am not happy with my choice of doing the really thick liner about around the girls in the very front. It's not as catastrophic as I thought when I was originally doing the piece, and I still like this pose a lot better than the one that I chose to be up at the front, but I'd say this is in my top five for this ink. Eh, that's actually a little too high. Maybe in like my top 10 for this Inktober. Maybe I'll do a quick ranking system and I'll kind of like rank them out at the end. The little bit of mess around the hair here on day 10 pattern aside, um, I really do like this piece. I think this was an interesting concept and I was really excited that this is the color that kind of broke the pattern. Like, of course it had to be the one that just got a blue after everything else had a whole bunch of uh, autumny colors. The one thing I really don't enjoy is the cat. They were so last minute. I just kind of have been adding cats into random places in, in these pieces and like the skulls and um, the snake with the skull on its back and later on the spiders that have the skull on their back. Wow, there's a lot of skulls this year. I wanted to make sure that there were aspects of other pieces kind of like winding their way through. I think it went a little bit overboard, but when I was done inking, I realized that the cat is just kind of hovering. So I had to put in this table just to kind of justify why the cat is there. And I hate that I had to do that. I think part of the problem was the fact that I was answering Q&A questions at the exact same time. I think another thing that also bothers me is I decided last minute to put this magic aura around everything. Logically speaking, there should be magic aura around the entire inside too, but I didn't want to cover over all of my hard work with all of this nice inking with more metallic blue shimmery stuff. Now this one is for sure in my top five. This is day 11 snow. Since I had a green watercolor for today's color, I didn't want to do kind of like evergreen trees in the background because this lime green is the wrong color of green. Adding black to it made it closer to the proper green for an evergreen tree, but since I already had planned to do an evergreen tree later on, I just realized I've not been going through the thumbnails either. I mean, y'all saw them for the videos, that's fine. I'll, I'll leave the thumbnails out unless there's like something drastically important to see. Most of these pieces I only did one thumbnail for, so what you see on the paper is essentially what I did in the thumbnail. 
Thumbnailing is essentially how I got through this entire Inktober without losing my mind. Because I did all the, the thumbnails beforehand and I could just follow what my original thought was without having to flounder and then skewing away from my original concept and just knowing what I'm going into usually helps me out in like the grand scheme of things. I feel like I'm not making sense. But yes, this piece is definitely in my top five for this year. I think I could have done a little bit more to make the snow more noticeable. Considering my, I don't know why, but every time I use my Sakura Jelly Roll or my Molotow acrylic ink pens to do white highlights, whenever I'm using watercolor, it pulls up the pigment. and. I'd never heard about this happening to other people. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Is it just the paint is too wet already? It's just very frustrating. And a lot of the chunks of snow that are landing on them have actually turned green. Very disappointing. And I'm gonna have to go back and fix those in Photoshop before I can make these into prints. All right, so day 12, Dragon. This is probably within my top three. So build is like, so we've got build and uh, dragon. Both of those are reds. It just goes to show you that I really like red, especially like these blood red colors. But I really like how I managed to do the shadowing through the eye. I am a little sad about the ink texture inside of the dragon, but We'll, we'll just say that the dragon has some splotchy colors. This is the, one of the ones that I really wish I was able to do a print of easily. Like this is another one that's going to be very difficult to figure out how I'm going to do the red metallic print with all of the shading in the eye. I might not be able to, and it might just be like a, a dull blood red, but we'll, we'll see. Something that's also so sad is the leaching of blue along the outside, because I felt bad wasting tape throughout the entirety of Inktober, since everything has this, um, technically it is 0.9 inches instead of one inch, because the tape I use is 0.9 inch uh, painter's tape, but, I, I had a massive ball of tape by this point, and I felt really bad just wasting a whole bunch of it like that, so I decided I'm going to try to reuse tape. There's a problem in that when you use tape to protect the edges of your paper from watercolor and the watercolor is still on the tape when you re-wet it while putting down inks. So there's little blotches of blue on here. Though they look a little green right now. I remember that being really angry at day 10 Surprisingly enough, this piece is probably within my top five for this inkto entire Inktober. The prompt word was ash, and I really wanted to focus on the incense over here. I was really nervous about using this, uh, this white ink texture, but I'm gonna have to do this again sometime because it worked out really well. There's also some uh, metallic medium up here in that gem or well, all of those gems that is going to be lost in the print. I really don't know how else to, uh, how to go about doing that. I might have to do painting on afterwards once I do the prints, but we'll see about that. <laughs> I feel like a lot of this is gonna be, we'll see about that. This kind of began this fake language over here on this book. I kind of wish I would have incorporated this language on day two mindless because about 40% of the time I spent on that piece was going through and putting titles on every single book. And you can kind of see the continuation of the spiders with the skulls on them that I started on day 12. Um, that was just kind of a way for me to continue putting the skull in places. I should have put a tiny skull inside of the ashes. I think that would be really cute. Too late now. I never thought I'd say this, but I think this might actually be my favorite piece from this entire Inktober. It's utterly shocking that I managed to make a piece that I absolutely love with such a bright pink. I think the Ecoline 337, which I'm pretty sure it's magenta, but I will double check if I'm not if that is incorrect. I think it's my favorite pink that I've ever used, ever. <sighs> say ever one more time, I dare you. Um, 
I think like the the big push for it to be my favorite Inktober piece of this year is this backpack. I will make myself this backpack or I will die trying. I think the map could have used a little bit of work and I think it would have been cool if I would have done a callback um well, actually it's tomorrow's piece. I think it would have been really cool if for day 15 legend, if I'd done this map here as well. Like that would have been a really cool tie in between the two of them. And I think the best part about this one is I can make a print out of it with absolutely no issues. <laughs> well, I mean, less issues than all of the other ones. So day 15 legend. So this one has my favorite hair out of this entire Inktober. And, and also, I love the hints of tattoos along her back. I tried really hard to make sure that I could hide characters in here that I could relate to on day 28 and 29, which is where we call back to these characters. And I'd originally planned on having only 28 and 29 linked together. But when I started drawing this character, I originally started drawing a character that kind of looked like the old lady from day eight frail but then i was like no i want it to kind of be more like a college age student and then i looked in my thumbnails at all of my miscellaneous characters that i'd already made for the thumbnails and i decided that i wanted to do like the pre-scene of uh of 28 where the girl in the background here who's actually a mail carrier here is going to fly by this girl's window to kind of like ask her out because it's definitely not creepy at all to use your job to your advantage like that. Just to know where your crush lives, you know. I would say this one isn't in my top 10 favorites for this entire Inktober. Just because of the wallpaper, it's just so uneven. If I did this again, I would probably go in with like a ruler and a flat brush instead of a round brush just to make it a little bit more even. I'm glad that I didn't do a solid wash of color. I think that would have made it a little bit too mundane isn't the word that I'm looking for. Static? No idea. It is, it is very late when I'm filming this. And I'm actually uh, going to Chicago tomorrow morning, so. Hopefully I'll be able to get this video up. So for day 16 wild, I I think this is, uh, let me see here. So, so far the only other pieces that don't have a white border around them are day nine and day five. Day nine, I didn't wanna have a white border around because I wanted to make all the figures in the background as big as I possibly could. Day five, I wanted the lack of borders to give you the feeling that you're actually like up close and personal. This piece honestly had no reason for not having a white border, and I feel like that makes it stand out in the wrong way to me. Like, I feel like this piece could have been a little bit better if I'd had a border around it, because it might have made me make this character smaller in relation to the background. Um, it might have made me change, like, certain aspects of how it's framed, because I don't really like this up here. The perspective is all wrong. Um, I also don't like how I tried doing the layers of strata. It just didn't work out. I think I'm actually going to do this right now. So I've been planning on going back in and actually getting rid of this curtain here so you can actually tell she's standing in front of a cave. So I think I'm actually going to do that right now. I'm so glad that I switched over to De La Rowney inks halfway through this Inktober. It just works so much better than the Liquitex I was using. You do get some smudging of color, like after it's dry you can rub some off with your finger. It still stays opaque on the paper, it's just like a little bit of the pigmentation comes off on your hand. There could be worse outcomes than that. So day 17 ornament, hmm, this one might actually shuffle up the top contender for best of Inktober of 2019 because I just love so much about this piece. Just the inclusion of the little doll witches, the sandworm from Beetlejuice, the use of Psycho Killer by Talking Heads, like there's just so much about this piece that I love to death. And honestly, the only thing I can, I want to criticize is the star here on her hat isn't perfect and that's it. 
Okay, that's a lie. The, the shoulder blade on the mom here is a little funky, but we can fix that in Photoshop. Because I'm not going to be selling the originals of these. I actually feel a little nervous selling originals. I just... I'm a hoarder when it comes to art stuff, so I just want to keep it with me always. This one is definitely going to be one of my favorite prints. So day 18 mischief, or er, mischief, wow, I'm, I wish it were mischief. Misfit was a little bit hard for me to figure out what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do anything too sad, so I decided to do these two magical cats who both have reasons to be misfits. This one has the two tails, the two-toned eyes, and the misshapen ear, which is actually something that Rosebud has, and one of my old cats, Major, also kinda had. And then this cat down here is missing most of his tail, and then is also missing an eye and a fang. But. I definitely liked going for this more cute and happy idea rather than, I think, my alternative. In the back of my Illo sketchbook, I originally had a giant list of just written ideas, and for Misfit, I had an odd ca odd witch cat with other cats. So it was going to be like one witch cat in the middle, which I count these as witch cats, whichever ones that have the three eyes. And then there were just going to be a whole bunch of normal cats sitting around them, kind of like looking at them judgmentally. And I just didn't want to do something that negative, you know? And as soon as I go from, yeah, I want to draw positive stuff with my art, I broke a girl's arm. <laughs> I didn't really know what else I could do for the word sling, but there's a lot about this piece that really worked out. The color, I don't think, is one of them. I wish that the color had been like a blue of some kind, because I'm I'm just not a big fan of this highlighter yellow. The I believe this is Ecoline 205 Lemon Yellow, and I thought it was going to be more like a sunflower yellow, but this is really like a toxic yellow. I guess it kind of works for a um, a sick a sickness kind of setting, but I really don't think the color is very good. One note. Like, one fun fact about this piece, this bench that she's sitting on is actually directly based off of the bench in my pediatric doctor's office that I grew, like, that I grew up going to. It's just kind of, like, ingrained in my memory that they have a bench kind of like this that you have to walk up these stairs to and you have to get on the, the cushion top. It's weird. But it, it's, like, the most iconic thing about doctor's offices to me. This is one that I'm kind of surprised that I don't like more. Day 20 Tread actually has a custom Liquitex ink that I mix myself. It's a mix of naphthalene chrismin, naphthalene chrismin, crimson, crimson, naphthalene crimson. Yes, that I think that's it. And also carbon black from the Liquitex ink. They have an ink kind of like this that's called muted pink. I haven't been able to get my hands on it yet, but. I'm hoping to try it and see whether or not it's similar enough to this color. I do like certain aspects of this, but I think there's just something that isn't working about the background back here. This just needs to be a little bit more detailed because I put so much detail in the front here that this just feels a little lacking. And so does the sky. I think the sky should have been a little darker. I couldn't go with too pink of a sky, otherwise it felt like it would have blended too much into this tree. And also I've done a lot of pink skies this Inktober, so I kind of wanted to make it a little bit more subdued. One thing I am so glad about is I did away with the, um, with the tape. I think the unrefined edge really lends itself to this piece, because you do have that wilderness aspect. This tree also looks very funky. I don't, I don't enjoy it. I wish I would have put more shadow on it, but it, at the time, it looked like I had more than enough on it. It just dried a lot lighter than I expected, which is very odd. I think I should have also put something in this full tone red color somewhere in the background, like maybe um, maybe the smoke here or like a light coming out of these this hole in the trees because it just feels like it's very focused on him. All that being said, this is still in my top 10 so it's gonna go over here. And here we have our last brown of the entire set and 
This piece was not supposed to be this complicated. I'm still a little mad at myself that it ended up becoming this complicated. <laughs> like, it was originally supposed to just be one guy down here, and then you don't even see their faces up here, but then I was like, ooh, wouldn't it be cool if all of these characters would also relate to all of these characters in the background around the main character? And also, I drew Shinji. We were going really, really fast through um, Neon Genesis Evangelion, Evangelion, however you pronounce that, when I was working on this piece. Whenever my sister and my girlfriend and I had free time, we were watching Evangelion. So, I think there was just like some, some subliminal, hey, you don't usually draw fan art, but time to draw Shinji vibes going on there. I really don't like browns. If I do colors in the future, I think brown will not be one of them. God, every single time I turn to a new piece, I think th the top 10 is grown. Th this is probably like one of the ones I'm happiest with. I'm a little sad that the video <laughs> was so long. Um, I tried not being too, too worried about that, but I just worried that the reception of the video would be less if, there, if, if it was that long. I am surprised how many people did watch that, and thank you guys so much for actually sticking around and wanting to watch a full two hour long video of me just like sometimes talking and sometimes just working on the piece. Um, I think the execution of these girls is better than these three. These three feel a little bit plain, but I really like the Gorgon girl, and also I like how I did the shadowing of just the clothes and just the shoes in the background here. That's like my favorite tiny detail. And also, I really want this rug. I don't have anywhere to put it, but I want it. So this piece kind of developed in a way that I wasn't expecting, and I think it ended up working out. The, the contrast of having so little orange on the statue versus a lot of orange on the characters really ended up working out. I don't know whether or not it really comes across that this character is the same person as this character, but that's kind of purposeful since the artist's interpretation of her is completely incorrect just because of how over time artists' interpretations of people can change if they don't have good enough record. I mean, hey, just look at Jesus. I think I should have used the full orange in more places, but this one isn't bad, it's just not my favorite. This piece has inspired me to draw more rats. This prompt word was dizzy. <sighs> God dang it. This prompt word was ancient. I keep, I keep forgetting to tell you guys which prompt word is which. But then again, you can also look up which is which in whatever video it is. But um, I want to draw so many more rats now, especially um, this one right here. This one is my favorite. I do think that his tail should kind of like be sticking up here, but we'll just kind of let him have no tail. I do think this one is a little weird for Dizzy, like you do have the, the Dizzy eyes on all the rats. And I think for her face turning a different color. I should have done purple instead of the gray because it's supposed to be kind of like her face going green with sickness, but it, it just kind of looks like sunburn because especially since I put it on her shoulders because I wanted to blush her shoulders. I'm surprised at how well this piece turned out considering that this is the worst Ecoline watercolor that I own. It just, I can never tell what color it's going to turn out to be and it's really frustrating to work with. One thing I think I'm going to need to get better at in the future is doing gradients. I wanted his head to go from like this nice stormy gray purple to this really nice blue, but you see this big splotch in the center and I don't know how to fix that. I'm going to have to do like, this upcoming year I'm going to force myself to do like one month of watercolor challenges. Just forcing myself to learn how to do watercolors. Not exactly forcing myself. I, I've been wanting to learn how to do watercolors for a while now. It's just that I've never done it because I've never really cared enough. But I think this Inktober challenge using the watercolors really helped me get more comfortable with them again. Like I used to use only watercolors before I got this monster stack of Copics and Ohuu markers. 
And excuse my messy desk, but also the Sharpies, Bix, and Parku markers. And there are eco lines somewhere else. But my, my hoarding of art supplies aside, um, I have a lot of watercolors and I need to use them. So I think I need to actually go through and make myself learn how to use them properly. There probably isn't like a lot that I'm doing wrong, but there's something enough that I'm doing wrong that it's causing textures that I don't like. So it's time for me to actually practice using these things. Now, Day 25 Tasty was one that I didn't expect to be one of my favorites. I randomly selected a fancy button-up shirt and victory rolls for the hair. And while I was looking for fancy button-up shirts, I remembered this kind of like this cummerbund that I found. That fashion actually turned out to be Edwardian fashion, but it's really cool that I did an Edwardian object on a Victorian walking skirt and victory rolls from the 1940s and 50s because we have this time traveler witch or some sort of di uh, diviner who can see the future and she's just mashing up all of these fashions that she has happens to find and like. And I'm glad that I finally have shown on this channel what it looks like for piercelings to be eating something. It's just all sorts of funky. The one part that I don't really enjoy about this piece is I tried doing the same watercolor texture that I did on day one, but up here, and it did not work whatsoever. I think I started in too dark. On day one, I started in with like my number three wash and then kind of like grew progressively darker. This one, I just went in straight with like a number five wash and I just darkened it up way too fast and didn't leave enough white spaces. I tried adding in white spaces and it just doesn't look as good. This is going to be another one that will prove very difficult to make a print of. And also it proves all sorts of problems for my white balance. I'll see if you can even see this. I might have to actually edit this part in post to make sure that it doesn't flicker constantly because it will. It will. But um, I was watching a lot of ghost adventures while I was working on these Inktober pieces towards the end. And I definitely wanted some in the dark sort of vibes. I was really gonna, I was originally going to do like a true demon, but I do like these shadow figures a lot more. And once again, the pants are shiny. Honestly, all of this piece is kind of shiny. There was parts where I tried going back over the shadow people with some extra layers of ink and it just didn't work. It didn't. It could have been that I didn't wash my brush all the way and it still had some blue, because that looks a little blue to me in, in real life. So this is probably the fifth piece. So we got day five, day 16, day nine, day 27, and day 26. So this is the fifth piece without the border. And again, I wanted this one to be without a border to make it feel like you're just that close up. I'm, I'm okay with this piece. I'm really glad that I didn't go with the original color that I had for coat. I originally had this kind of skin tone sort of color and my plan was to have this person hiding out as a witch in a big coat. Like it's two kids trying to get into somewhere and this vampire stopping them from going. And I just felt like I couldn't do a background with that piece. And if I wasn't gonna do a background, I wanted to do something zoomed up enough that you can't really, like there wouldn't be enough space for a background. I use this time to kind of like practice doing some subtle details to hair. And this is actually a self portrait almost of me. It was rather fortunate that we got another red because I could do the red witches from day five's prompt. It is a different color. I think I wanted to use as much of the pure naphthalene crisman as I crimson as I could. I keep miss saying crimson, but um, this piece is just okay. We have the, what's this? Yes. This is the last of our metallics. And one problem I have with drawing again and again characters that I create one day and go to the next, I can never make them look 
the exact same. They always look a little different. Like, just showing you the next day's piece, this girl and this girl look slightly different. The head size is different. Her head size is different here as well. It's just, I'm not very consistent with my character designs. Also, I feel like that she isn't perfectly proportioned to her counterpart over in this one. I also wish I would have included some tattoos on her here as well. I do think the gold was a great fit for this piece. I had kept in mind making her hair blonde, so that way, um, Oh shoot, Raven, that's her name. Raven and Andrea? I'll have to write them down on the back of these pages because I don't rem I'm pretty sure her name is Andrea. I'll correct myself on screen if I am incorrect, but um, I really do think the gold was a good use for her hair here and also the spikes and the belt. Then the next day's piece for Injured. I think I could have done more to make her injured. I, I definitely was rushing a bit through this piece as you can kind of see from all of the bad texture, the, well, it's not bad texture. It's just texture that I don't really favor in the background of this ink. So this one is definitely not one of my favorites. I also messed up on part of her hair here. That little strand there is not supposed to be, uh, not supposed to be dark like that. This one could have been in the top three if I'd done a different design for these bats. I really like these curled up bats in the box or like in the cage. And also the second detracting factor is all of these circles. I should have just done the bands in one direction instead of doing these rings. This one I might actually redo digitally and we'll, we'll see about, about doing that. Um, I do really like the cathedral window style background. I need to get back into doing that. That's something that I really like in a lot of my older pieces. Let me zoom you out so you can see the full cathedral window. If it weren't for the shape of these two bats and the net, this would be in the top 10, but unfortunately that's dropped it a little lower. I'm surprised by how much I like this color. It's kind of, it's a pre-mixed pale pink, and I actually have it right here. I just used it the other day. Um, I think this was a really good purchase. So if you're looking through the Ecoline sets, I very much suggest this color. And here we are, the final piece for this Inktober, the Queen of Halloween herself. I think in the comments, um, somebody suggested just calling her the Pumpkin Queen, and I'm on board with that. I'm very glad that I ended on an orc instead of an elf, so that way we go from one fantasy race to another. And I think I could have done a little bit more for some of these pumpkins, like this one here could have a little bit more. Um, I don't think she also has enough contrast in her design. That's kind of like the downfall of using just the one color that you have to kind of find your balance. But I think that also kind of keeps me in check because otherwise I just kind of go rampant with color or I just pick one or two colors anyways. I'm just a lot more comfortable with the this style of color palette. And uh, we are at the end. So starting with the 10th, we have day 22 ghost. There is a lot that I like about this piece mostly happening over here. Just the fact that I don't exactly like these characters over here as much kind of detracts. So that's why this is at number 10. Then number nine, we have the pumpkin queen. I do love how many pumpkins designs I was able to fit into the background. And I'm definitely going to carve this as my pumpkin next year. But the detracting feature is the contrast and I think these ones, I don't know if I'm going to manage to do prints for every single Inktober piece. We'll see depending on when I actually manage to get prints out. I've been wanting to open up an online store for a little while now. So 
if there's any prints other than, if there's any pieces other than these top 10 that you would like prints of, go ahead and leave a comment set comment down below. Because these ones I definitely will be making prints of. Then next we have day 20, Tread. Just because I love how neat the plaid is. And also, this is my favorite color, so it just kind of draws me in a little bit closer. Then we have day 13, Ash just because of how delicate the smoke looks while also actually being present, you know? Then we have day one ring, just because we kicked it off so well and the water texture ended up turning out pretty darn good. Next we have snow, just because I feel like this one is a different take than I usually would have gone with. Then we have day 12, Dragon. The main detracting thing for me about this one is just kind of like down here. I could have done a little bit more in, in the smoke and also the texture of the dragon. And surprisingly, in third place, we have um, day five build. I do love this piece and like it's definitely in my top in all of Inktober that I've ever done. It's just that there's some aspects about it that I kind of don't immediately look at until I'm comparing it to other pieces that are better. Like the, the blushing on her cheeks is a little weird. And also the shadow inside of her eye from where I was trying to fix how thick her eyeliner was. So there's just some things that I would change about this piece. Then number two, we've got Overgrown. And I think Day 17 ornament really only kicked it out of first place because there's just a lot more references to things. And this is a tree that I want in my house. I do want this backpack, but there's so much more about this that I want in my life. And also I like the green a little bit more than the pink. So some final thoughts about this year's Inktober. I'm beyond ecstatic that I managed to finish every single day and get videos up. I'm a little sad that some of them went up a little later than usual, but hey, they're still up, they're out there. And I think this really helped me streamline my, my editing process and also get me more comfortable with using brushes. I've never been quite comfortable using them. So this was definitely a lovely exercise in making sure that I could efficiently work with them. Now, the colors. At the beginning of this entire thing, I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be so cool. Every day is gonna be a different hint of color. Hint my ass. Like, look, th there's there's some of these that do have just a hint of color. Like, the, the yellow's pretty much just a hint of color. But then uh, there are some others. Well, this is accents. There are some others that I just kind of like threw that notion to the wind and just didn't look back. And I don't know how to, f how to feel about that. So things for next year. One, videos. I'm so sorry. I'm never going to be doing a video for every single day ever again. Next year, I might do like specific prompt words that I'm really feeling and post those videos. I might do like every fifth day, every third day, something like that. But I had absolutely no social life for the entirety of Inktober. And I, I love that I got everything out, but I don't love that this, this actually caused some problems for me. Like I spent the entirety of my time working on videos and I wanted to get things for Inacost done. I wanted to get some more writing for my Monster of the Week campaign done. And those things just didn't happen because I would spend at least three hours on every single piece. Well, on average, three hours on every single piece. And then I'd immediately have to go start editing. And for all the videos with live recorded audio, if I spent three hours working on the piece, I had to spend three hours editing the video because I had to sit through the entire video all over again to be able to edit it. And 
I like doing the live recorded audio. I like being able to like show you guys my exact thinking process from step A to B to C and then decide that B was better and step go to step D after that. Um, so I would probably be doing the live recorded audio for the entire thing of Inktober, but the quantity by the end, well, around the middle, it felt like the quantity was more important than the quality. Like day 16, for example, I was rushing to finish this one on the day of, so I could immediately go and record another one for day 17 over here. There were some days like day 16 where I was rushing to finish them on the day of, so I could immediately go and edit them on the day of and get them posted at one in the morning the next day. Like the, it, the clock had turned over and it was now the next day. So that is something that's definitely not going to happen again next year. It was fun as an experiment, but I don't think the, the outcome was really worth it, you know? Like, I, I'm overjoyed by the fact that through this Inktober, we are now at 398 subscribers. Back in September, I was at 170-something. So thank you guys so much for joining in and supporting this channel. And second order of business, the colors. So I liked having an individual color for every single day. In the beginning of planning for Inktober, I was very worried that I would just do gray tones, and I would get so bored. Like I see people on Instagram and they use the exact same four colors for every single piece. And I'm like, that's, that's great for you, but I'm kind of bored of just looking at it for, for a little while. Like your art is great, but I have to wonder how long they can stand staring at the same color palette day after day after day. Like I, I get a little bit frustrated when I start drawing the same thing day after day after day. Like this wolf guy that I drew a little while ago. I drew them again in my Illo sketchbook and I, that I've only drawn them twice. I'm already a little tired of them. Like I don't like drawing the same thing over and over again just because it makes me feel like I'm not going anywhere. That's probably also one of my other hangups with drawing comics, but we'll get into that in a different video. Um, so I'm definitely going to be doing colors again. However, I think next year I'm going to be doing a set order of colors. Yep, there goes a pen. Um, having these yellows followed by a whole path of reds and red violets and then brown, and then metallic, and then a blue and a green, and then we're back to red, and then orange and pink and a bunch of blues. It just, it doesn't feel cohesive. What I was looking for for Inktober was making something cohesive. And I think next year I'm going to do kind of like, let me, let me set up an example. So it's probably way too early to be planning out for next Inktober. And by probably, I mean it is absolutely way too early to be planning out for next Inktober. However, I am 100% a planning mind. I, I like to get my ducks in a row before I run into things, at least art-wise. Otherwise, I'm just kind of like barreling into things headfirst. But anyway, um, so my preliminary idea for next year's Inktober is to kind of do like an Inktober Huevember mix. I'm going to start with one ink, move down the line, and then kind of typewriter return back to the beginning. I'm thinking that this is going to be my final batch of watercolors because these are all of the ones that I liked the most this year. The pale rose, the pink, of course, my favorite dusty red, the orange that I used on Ash, the yellow from Misfit, the green from Ornament, the blue from Pattern, the blue from Ghost, the purple from Dizzy, and the purple from Tasty. Now, if I do this batch of watercolors, 31 days passes back to day 31, being back at this pink because 
we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we go three passes and then one. However, I was also thinking if Ecoline has a better red in here, like an actual like true bright red. I've been looking to add one to my collection because I want to do a little bit more than just this blood tone red. If we do that, it would be 11, so 11, 22, and then it would be 33 to get through the entire group, so 33, 32, 31. So we'd end on the blue. I'm not quite sure which one I like better, because I do like the whole ending on the same one you started on, but I really want to have a different red in here. I do feel a little bad that it would be two pinks, two reds, only one of the orange, yellow, and green, two blues, and two purples. Once again, it is way too early to be planning out for next Inktober, and I'm already so excited. I just, I absolutely love doing prompt words. I thrive on being given random ideas and having to go with them. And also, one thing, one other thing for the review of Inktober, that snap sucked, so let me do that again. Can we have a quick moment of silence from my desk? Because all of this is the scars of Inktober. I'm going to have to refinish my desk or get a new desk cover before I actually do a tour of my setup here, which I'm hoping to film that somewhat soon because the studio is clean for once and I don't know how long it'll stay that way. Thank you guys so much for all your love and support for this entire series. I'm so glad that I was able to see it all the way to the end and I'm already so excited for next year's Inktober. So I hope you guys will join me again next year and I hope you guys have a good one. If you feel so inclined, hit that subscribe button and check me out on my other social media handles. Thanks and I'll see y'all in the next one.